my words of wisdom are don't be overwhelmed by the chaos of EVO. If you have questions, ask them. Uh, we're trying to tune into all the different chat rooms, so if you're having any problems, please post them there. We'll do our best to address them. Yeah, Thomas is one of the mentoring mentors, one of the mentoring moderators. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk to him here. I'm, I'm afraid I won't have uh, sound on, uh, on Second Life because uh, I don't know how Vance does it, but for me, uh, Second Life voice only works if I'm on a VPN, but it slows down my connection so much that I, uh, I don't want to risk it because there are just a bit too many windows open, so I think I will do mine in the Hangout if, uh, if that's okay. Sounds yeah, I get good. the same problem. I use a VPN for voice. Second Life works fine without a VPN, but you can only text chat. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's my experience. That's, uh... So what can you tell us about the mentoring session of EDO? All right. Well, uh, it's, been, it's been really, really exciting. Uh, you probably know that Marina Gonzalez and, uh, and her colleagues have been doing the uh, mentoring course for years and years now. Uh, the mentoring course is in its seventh year uh, this year. And uh, last year, a colleague of mine, well, uh, somebody I had never met before, uh, Daniela Wagner, who is German but lives in uh, the States and works at the university uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, we were both participants at the course last year. <laughs> And we got really, really excited about what was going on, and uh, we approached um, a Marina. I lost my other. audio for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Let me try again. Nelly, I think you are having audio issues. We're not experiencing Recording. them. Uh, okay, I think it's working now. You should be able to hear me now. Oh, well, we can. Um, we've been hearing I you. I think. Let me know if you can hear me now. Yes, uh, we so can hear you. I guess things are kind of yep. funny. We can hear you, <laughs> yeah, but can you hear us? Can you well, hear me? You yeah, I've been. While Thomas continues. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. So, so uh, it was fantastic to be involved. Um, mentoring was at the time something that I was uh, doing <laughs> here with the Ministry of Education in uh, Dubai. And uh, I was working with a group of teachers, and uh, it was a, a very frustrating experience for me. So it came in handy to have a, a session on mentoring uh, here um, at the Electronic Village. And then as the course went on, we got very, very excited about it. So Daniela and I decided to approach Marina if we could get involved as co-moderators the course this year. Uh, so that's how it started uh, and we've been working together pretty much since the end of uh, last year's uh, EVO session, uh, mentoring EVO session. Uh, we took part in the training uh, in September and uh, we found Edmodo a very, very useful platform. So we are running our course on uh, Edmodo. We've got 71 people uh, who have registered for this course, uh, or session, sorry. I will use course sometimes, that's just because I'm a teacher and I always think in courses, but it's not a course, it's a session. So um, we've got 71 people signed up for the session and uh, they've been really, really active uh, during the week. Uh, we've uh, covered the globe pretty much. Uh, we've got people from Kamchatka, We've got uh, Olga from Kamchatka, from a rural part of Kamchatka as well. So if you can imagine rural, uh, like remote of the remote. And then we've got the other end of the world. Um, uh, in Peru, we've got Victor uh, Rojas, who probably many of you know already. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been a fascinating experience building the materials, putting together the curriculum, and um, and uh, I think it was uh, it was a, an interesting, sometimes frustrating um, 
hoping for the uh, for those who, who had been running the course for a long time to have new people coming in and uh, trying to veer uh, away the, the course <coughs> from the way it had been run. But uh, I think in the end we all um, we all got together as a as a very nice team, and uh, we are all set and ready to go to uh, start the course tomorrow. I'm just Any curious, questions? how are you defining mentoring? Is it kind of in a, a formal context? Is it certain uh, academic levels? Is it more general, like Webhead's community of practice? You could say there's mentoring going on there. What's the scope? Exactly. Um, but the scope is, uh, that, that was probably the most, uh, most difficult for us to get our heads around. Um, and this year we decided to concentrate mostly on uh, different scenarios where mentoring takes place. So um, there will be, uh, we will be talking about uh, mentoring as, uh, as something fairly uh, organized and, uh, and top down. And we will be talking about online mentoring. Uh, we'll discuss issues related to uh, mentoring relationships, de depending on which uh, which setup the mentoring uh, happens. As as I as, as I mentioned before, my my frustration with the with mentoring here in uh, the UAE at the time was that um, that that it was top down, and uh, and I very strongly believe that. Uh, a proper mentoring relationship has to be more mm, equal and uh, the participants have to um, sort of work on creating that relationship, not just uh, somebody telling you that you are the mentor of somebody else. So um, we are going to look at different scenarios and what we are, uh, and because we've got uh, such a wide variety of teachers with a uh, spread of different experiences. What we will try to do is, uh, uh, is, is to create uh, scenarios which, uh, which most teachers can identify with and which, uh, which they, can be more, uh, they can find something to take with them. Did the sentence the make sense? Not much, sorry. Well, <laughs> I rambled on a little bit, sorry. <laughs> you're going to be using the Enmodo. Uh, for people yes. who are not officially part of the session or not part of the Enmodo, are you going to be putting any stuff out there publicly that people can tune into? Uh, we've got a, uh, a Twitter, a Twitter account, and we are using uh, the Twitter hashtag uh, MentorEvo uh, for... Uh, for, for wider access to uh, what is happening. Uh, um, a couple of us, me in the first place, and uh, as the, one of the moderators, and uh, a few others are going to be, um, are, are going to be um, uh, blogging about it. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just trying to watch too many directions. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Thomas. Well, I'm still trying to reach Osna, who's who's on the platform, and it would be great to get Osna's voice from the platform. But he's um, a little bit dis <laughs> he's everywhere. So, is um, let me give it a, a start um, to tell a little bit about Machinevo, um, as this is the second session. Is it okay to give it a start here? Certainly. And would you want to stream Second Life? Because we are all there. Uh, Jens is there. Um, that, that's my question. Where should I be getting audio from, though? Do you want it coming from the Are the, the audio hand? from here for the moment? OK. And, and we'll keep audio yeah. here. And I'll look at uh, Second Life while. Uh, that while would be doing. great. Fantastic. So um, uh, um, a hello from not only Brussels, but uh, today I'm in Munich. And we are here on Edunation, that is our new Machinevo platform, uh, Machinevo platform that we've um, set up. Uh, this actually for languages. Um, and it was Barbara Novelli and Jens Nerido 
who enable this platform. If you zoom out a little bit, um, Nemo. Uh, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> take, I'm, I'm working yeah. on it. It's my my computer's uh, feeling. Yeah. It. The same here, same here, very, very difficult. So uh, here present is Edith, Jens, myself, and Osna. Right next to it is um, somewhere. Okay, so this platform is hanging in midair. If you go a tiny little bit more, uh, you might have. Um, is hanging in midair above Age Nation, and it was specially set up for um, at that time languages for a machinima workshop. This time we're going to use it exclusively for Machinevo. And I'm so happy that we have our second session of Machinevo this year because last year I know I remember we were so, so nervous because we, we, we set out to learn how to produce video and film in Second Life. Prerequisite of our session was Second Life experience. And last year we didn't have a single clue neither of filmmaking, storyboarding, film editing, uploading, nothing. And Jens, interestingly, is uh, he has been teaching filmmaking at college uh, for about 20 years. We didn't know that at that time, um, that he's been a long-standing friend. And when we started to set out Machinevo, he came out with this amazing truth for us that he's been the most uh, professional out of all filmmakers out of us. We're just language teachers. And here's Osna. We're wondering whether Osna can hear us. Um, let me see. Osna, uh, would you be able to switch on the audio? Um, Jeff LeBeau would like uh, to yes, stream your audio totally from here. Second. I've just started to introduce the people here present. You're talking. You're talking. Excellent. Excellent. Do you want to take, take over, Osna? We're very honored to for you to take the session. <coughs> uh, can I be heard now? Yes. Jeff, yes. Can you hear me? We're good. Um, yes, well, I'm illustrating something by moving be between uh, three places. Uh, never mind all of that. Uh, I've got echoes. I hope you haven't. Hector, as she has started to, to tell you, uh, is the powerhouse as usual, and she has organized this this second uh, yearly event. It's now the second year of Machinimo. Uh, I hope and think you all know that Machinima is, is a word made up from machine and cinema. And with this very clever twist, Machinima with an EVO at the end, it fits it into the, the present format. And what it's about, of course, is making videos, films, for use in, in our case, Second Life. So it brings together our incredible team who have um, uh, great experience in producing Machinima, and teachers, and people who are interested in acting, people interested in the technological side, and what holds it all together, those who want to use this in the teaching of foreign languages, especially the teaching of English as a foreign language. I will pause there in case nobody's hearing me. Can hear you fine. Can you hear us? Probably not. People in the yeah. hangout were not speaking in Makes Second Life. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Um, I will say this very. No, I can. I can hear you very well indeed. I, oh, I started good. with your wonderful calendar, which then started going backwards. And having got to opening time, it went back to this event will start in eight minutes. That confused me. Ah, <laughs> confused us too.
Okay. Um, I don't know whether you hear me now, Osna. Um, I would like to just uh, con continue with that um, to explain a little bit how we are running the session, if that's okay. We meet three times a week here on the platform for various uh, sessions, such as first is cinema time. We're looking at the 17, well, so far it's already 40 machinimas that we've all produced since last year. Um, which of which we are very proud of, obviously. And uh, then we will uh, introduce our productions to everyone and help uh, get a feeling for it and critique it a little bit and then set out to do storyboarding. And this year what we will do differently from last year is the following. We would like to, as educators, focus on how to use machinima in class how to use these videos in class, and also how to immerse our language learners to start their own productions. Yeah, that is the focus. And this year, we would like to start off with the storyboarding with some still images. Create the story up front with still images, and then go into the filming bit. Because we find that's a bit scaffolding it in a way that people can more manage. Uh, we're very, very confident this year that we are looking forward to a great session. And um, I'm personally very happy about Machine Evil. And uh, I'm happy about because of the following reason. And uh, this is how I describe this, um, because um, we can say that moving pictures and sound and stories are the most powerful way of communicating learning content. And um, I think our learners are already, some of them are in the Generation Z which is called the, uh, the generation that is quite familiar with video and film from childhood. And they're quite uh, sophisticated consumers of film. And so when we educators produce some language learning conversations for the purpose of learning the language, then I think we ought to sort of meet some heightened expectations of uh, some of these. Uh, some, some of them are native video producers themselves. Yeah? So YouTube is really a, a great community. Um, YouTube is now, I think, uh, the second after Facebook and uh, second uh, most popular search engine as well. So um, we're looking forward to, to, again, a new set of videos. And then, yeah, that's for me. Thank you very much for listening. Maybe I could say uh, a bit also. Um, I have a small thing I would like to say. Can you hear me? Yes, please. OK. Well, besides all the things I'm talking about making machinima, uh, the most important thing I actually think is the social dimension in, in the teamwork that we are this is a global course that we are able with the technology today to be able to collaborate and and um, and work together on a project making a film from the beginning to the end that's a fantastic thing so the social dimension is more than 50 percent of the whole process and that's of course in all teaching is a very important part okay All right. I had one quick technical question. I was looking on your um, your stations here, and you mentioned the free Camtasia software. Is that something other than Jing? Uh, no, the free Camtasia software we are using is only the thirty day trial one. Ah. Yeah, it's uh, we are using Fraps to do the actual uh, recordings. Fraps, the free version of Fraps, or the paid version of the 30 US dollars cost paid version. But Camtasia itself is not free, and yet we've decided to use Camtasia for the 30 days because we find it's the everyone has it, and it's the easiest one we can communicate um, to to everyone to to learn how to to edit. There are editing tools around that are free. And we list those on the website, but we've decided to use Contagia for the session. All right. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> world. We will look forward to staying tuned. I'm going to go ahead and exit Second Life, but we'll hope to catch you here again soon. <laughs> he's he's making uh, screens of what he sees. Since I'm only here, I love the Hangout. Are, are you familiar with the Hangout, everyone? Have you tried the Hangout before? It's a Google Plus. If you have a Gmail account, it should be quite easy. All right, so I'm going to pass on the uh, mics to you, 
so you can talk about um, your experiences. Oh, there, Jeff is here. To do, do I give you, you know, video and so on? I'll just do that. But there you are. Hello, Jeff. You look very interesting. You're screening, I see. Can you also speak through here, or maybe not? Uh, okay, I had to leave the Hangout because um, I was echoing within myself, even though I don't think... I hear you. Go ahead. Oh, you and hear I'll me. I'll pass on the mics to others. Jeff? Okay, if you hear me, that's great. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to yeah, I hear you. I getting hear you uh, Wiz... up to speed with WizIQ. I've always yes. been rooting for WizIQ. You know, it's, a, I think, a, a corporately friendly alternative to some other right, bigger so options. Yeah, they're very friendly. I'd, I'd like to say that they're so friendly, in fact, that you can actually ask for features that would make uh, teaching and learning um, better for you. You can ask for anything. I asked for different languages, and within two weeks, you know, there was an interface of WizIQ, these virtual classes in Arabic, in Hebrew, in other languages, which are generally, if we're talking about Hebrew and Arabic, they're from right to left, which is a bit problematic, but they had no problems. I also contacted other organizations like Adobe Connect, and they said, forget it. <laughs> we don't cater to anybody's needs. So that's basically why I, I like WizIQ. And the Moodle for Teachers session is going to be within the two systems, uh, within a Moodle as well as WizIQ, and the reason it's going to be on WizIQ as well is because after the course, participants can continue connecting and getting information. Moodle is a closed platform, password protected with uh, courses that are limited in time, they're not on the cloud, and they don't run forever. Where elsewhere, you can keep on connecting with your participants. So that's why we've got the <laughs> Uh, going. And I'm going to pass on the mic to uh, others here who can say hello. We've got people from um, around the globe, actually. So, Luann, can I pass on the uh, mic to you and to Duma? Duma is well known as a curator from around the world, and there's Professor Oliver and Ada. So, I'm just basically passing on the mics to everybody, whoever is able to uh, grab it. Mm -hmm also speak. So we've got uh, Professor Oliver. Hello. Maybe you'd like, like to tell us where you're from and um, about the course that you're going to take. Professor Oliver just muted his mic, so that didn't go too well. Duma, let me give you the mic. There we go, and I think that maybe we can also see you, Duma. Actually, it's Lucien, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, Lucien, um, do you want to say a few words? Okay, we're not getting anyone, so I guess it's just me who's going to be speaking um, at the moment. All right, so a little bit about the uh, course. Here's uh, a little bit since you're screen sharing, I see there, uh, Jeff. Course highlights. Well, the course is um, going to be only uh, actually two things. It's going to be about Moodle, and participants are going to have a chance to practice as they go and uh, teach others so that it's a very active kind of learning. Uh, these are the course highlights. Um, they're going to be learning basic Moodle skills, such as uh, what it means to add resources, activities to engage learners, the blocks that they'll be able to uh, use, and how to manage enrollments. Those are the basic things. Uh, one of the most difficult things about Moodle is uh, enrollment. <laughs> because Moodle is password protected, and the course has a key. So um, I created a video with all the explanations to make things easier. But you know what? No matter how easy you think you're making things online, 
Um, they're always questions. They're great because they're very helpful in getting us going. Here's a video. I don't know whether this is going to work, but it should be interesting if we can get this working. Here's EVO 2013. Registration has started, and this is how you can create your account. It's muting. So I just stopped. I was just wondering if it uh, if it would work. All right. So um, that's about the Moodle. Another thing is the facilitators. I'll be uh, co-facilitating uh, the course, the five week course, with um, three other people that I met online and face to face eventually. And um, we're all doctors, which is um, nice since we worked really hard to get our degrees. Uh, there's um, Dr. Nicholas Rodova, Dr. Nancy Simone, uh, Dr. Barbara Yalov, and myself. So um, it's going to be really exciting since we met um, on Moodle. I uh, taught and they were my uh, students, so it's nice to have students uh, becoming facilitators and so on. So it's really uh, going to be a fun um, workshop and I'm really looking forward to all the participants. Let me see if I can get Duma to speak here. I know that he has a lot to say. Nah, it's not working. Oh, he's got a really slow system. Okay, so that's it, Jeff. Um, if there are any questions, uh, you're welcome to um, ask. All right, it uh, looks good. We'll look forward. Now, uh, people will need to log into the Moodle to see all the good stuff? Uh, yes. And uh, the link to the Moodle is, again, I'm just going to share the, uh, the video with you. It's on the, uh, the same page that you came through. Uh, if you can just get that link. Can you get that link, Jeff? Everything is on that link. You'll get the video with the introduction, and then the uh, syllabus is uh, in the information on the video. So basically, it's all there. Yeah. Um, not that link. I was thinking of the WizIQ, the current session link. Uh, I just can't move because once I'm in uh, Hangout, I'm hijacked. Okay. Let's see if I... Oh, I got the link. I got it. I got it. Okay, here's the link. I'll share it uh, okay. in, the, uh, in the class. That's the link. Okay, that link has everything. It's got the video that introduces and the um, syllabus for the course. So it's all there. We've got a few ways of... Um, getting to people, but I think uh, YouTube does a really great job. So I've added things there. All right. Well, thank you, Nelly. We're going to... Wait a minute. Wait. Oh. There's Helene. I'd like to get her. She's our mentor. Um, you know, mentors have mentors. Helene is overlooking uh, the course. I think this is our second year together, so if we can get Helene uh, up here, that would be great. Okay, I'm just passing it on to her. If not, uh, oh my gosh, yeah, there's a huge latency. Let me take my... So we can get Helene. Well, maybe Helene will join us. Yeah, uh, if, if you or Helene or others want to join in... Uh... Later, please feel free to revisit the Hangout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elaine will try to join us later. So I'm closing this, um, this session off. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, okay. It's else. Okay, we, we have you Maisie, now. who's also a part of a uh, board participant, and uh, all other friends, Lane, Evelyn, uh, etc. Well, again, I'm the, and Jennifer, yes. Again, I'm the uh, representative of Bo here, but um, Ayat and Fernanda can also say a few words. Uh, I'd like to say that we're celebrating our 10th anniversary this year, which is a great feat. And uh, let me see if I can put the, a link to, yes, to the 10 years of Bo page. If you'd like to take a look, I created this page with everybody 
uh, meaning coordinators, moderators, and guest speakers we've had along the years. And um, we are very excited about this 10th year. Uh, we're going to have lots of guest speakers, practically two a week. And um, we are going to have, I'm sure, a very special graduation party, which will be prepared for the 17th of February. And uh, it's the same with a few new tools. So we deal basically with uh, Web 2.0 tools. And we have a different topic each week. We start with uh, the first week in getting familiar with Yahoo Groups and TV Works. And uh, then we go on to audio and video, etc. Last week is basically blended learning because that's one of the great things we're talking about, blended learning and online learning too. And um, we have a fabulous group of coordinators and moderators. Coordinators are Fernanda, who is here, and uh, Daph, and uh, Larissa, who is uh, Yakutian in the United States. And we have different mods from all over the world. It's a, great, it's a very international group. Uh, we work with basically with Yahoo Groups. It's been uh, very loyal to us since 2004 when we started, and also with PV Works. But those are the main uh, tools, and then we have we deal with, as I said, different Web 2.0 tools uh, during the five weeks. So maybe I can pass on the mic to Ayat and Fernanda. Uh, if they want to say something. So bye-bye to everyone. Enjoy the EVO workshop. At the moment, we have, I think, close to 200 participants uh, from many different countries. I still haven't uh, jotted that down. But I can say that um, at the end of Board 12, we had 2,800 uh, participants in those nine years from 104 countries, which I think is just fabulous. It's amazing for us, very great uh, feeling. So bye-bye, everyone, and enjoy the five weeks. Yeah, thanks, Teresa. I'll put in a word in that session eventually, <laughs> once it starts. But I've been looking at all the introductions that have been coming through. And looking forward to speaking to you actually on Wednesday. But can, you can, can you hear me? This might not be audible in the in the Illuminate, okay. is it? This is Ayat from Egypt. I'm one of the honored co-moderators of Bo. Uh, I have joined Bo as a participant in 2011, and then I had a great chance to be one of the co-moderators. I just would like to to say something that, if you all agree with me, most of the web heads here started with Bo. So it's like the starting point for a very long journey later on that really makes great web heads. Uh, another point is that our week five is about blended learning. It's supposed to be the last week, but it's actually the beginning of very uh, successful collaboration projects between the participants. And I was honored to be one of them. And we also extended our session last year to have more collaboration later on after Bo, so it doesn't just end in week five. We have an extended Bo course <laughs> later on after the week five ends. So um, Bo is just the, the beginning for all newbies, and it's also a long life journey later on. Thank you. I'm one of the uh, board 13 moderators. Um, in fact, I've been a moderator since uh, 2007. Um, I'm very excited about this year's uh, coordinator. Yes, please, thank you. Um, uh, uh, we are very excited about this year's uh, uh, workshop. As we are, as Teresa already said, we are celebrating our 10th anniversary. And uh, um, up to the moment, 
I can say that we already have 185 um, people uh, joining us from several several countries. Uh, it's difficult to tell you, but I can mention a few ones: um, Abu Dhabi, Argentina, uh, Armenia, Australia, Azerbaijan, Brazil, Bulgaria, Canada. Uh, China, Croatia, Egypt, France, Germany, India, Iran. Well, I'm going to stop because the list is enormous. And uh, if, uh, if someone else is <laughs> right, well, um, so I'm going to finish from the moment. So uh, if someone else wants to say something. Uh, hi, this is Elizabeth. Um, uh, as I just said, we're um, for the DigiKids session. We've moved over to Edbodo as our main communication platform, and those who bite the really good. Um, and those who have tried using Edbodo know that it can be really brilliant and it can be really a mess depending on how um, people use it. Hello. Um, yes. So we're, we're sorting that out. Fortunately, we have the week to do that. And um, but we're encountering another problem, which is a bit serious. Is that as last year we've taken Posterous as the platform for uh, everyone to post their um, production on. Now, Posterous was really exceptional as a platform because you can have collaborators who are co-editors who have full access to the site, and then you can allow anyone to post via email. So this is really good because we ended up with a real blog with posts from all of the participants, and it was very conducive to interaction. And then in March this year, Twitter took over Posterous. And now it seems I don't know who Twitter is uh, attached to. Is Twitter uh, very much attached to Facebook? Maybe. Anyway, now it's getting so closely integrated into Facebook that uh, I'm afraid it might be um, a problem for some participants because it takes uh, a while for some people to put themselves out there, like in the way that Facebook. Um, Requires you do that uh, because uh, well I'll just finish up with a, an example of the, one of the problems which it, the, the really sad thing is that all of this change is this week so uh, for example uh, Posters had a function like so you could click on a like button within Posters now last night they changed that and turned it into a tweet or uh, Facebook-like. So now if you sort of signal you've read someone's post, it's going to go all over Facebook and all over Twitter. Yikes. Not quite sure how to deal with this. But um, some, some, well, we'll see what happens. Um, so what can I say? Some people have started. Uh, it's certainly not a bulk. Course, I think, although we do have some real beginners and some very competent members. So it's very much um, interaction, and some people have started already making great looking things which they have managed to post on this posters. Voila, for me. Um, Ezra has left, I think, or Marissa, or is there anyone else here to speak about Digi Kids? Right, that's it for me. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I'm Marisa. I'm uh, involved uh, uh, in the uh, DigiKids uh, storytelling, uh, digital storytelling for young learners as well. And uh, as you see here, it's a great group of uh, people who have a lot of experience in tech tools and teaching young learners. And uh, I think uh, the problems that Elizabeth uh, described can be problems for any platform, but uh, it's a learning curve for us as well, learning to use the different tools. 
Um, in any case, we've begun with the posturers and uh, getting people um, involved in uh, already creating uh, little presentations. Um, and uh, I don't know if uh, I can share. Um, Elizabeth, I don't know if you have our posturers uh, link handy to share because I don't have it handy here. I can try and find it for you in a minute. Um, they've already started introducing themselves and already there's a great array of uh, small presentations. Thank you. And um, um, people introducing themselves using uh, Storybird and um, um, Go Animate and uh, Extra Normal and so on. So it's it's a great um, collection of people who want to share ideas about creating stories through comics, through video, through storyboarding. And um, I think uh, it's not a beginner's course in teaching young learners. It's, it's a course for people who want to develop their skills and who want to engage young learners into some technology that can be really meaningfully integrated into their lessons. And I think we're all going to have a great time learning um, together. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Miguel, we're not getting any audio. What about now? Can you listen to me? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK, great. So uh, hola, everybody. Hello there, everybody. Miguel Mendoza from Caracas, Venezuela. Uh, I am one of the co-moderators for the podcasting for the ESL EFL classroom session. Uh, there are some other moderators uh, participating in this session. Evelyn Izquierdo, Venezuela. Julia Ascension, Venezuela, but living in the United States. And Miguel Pérez uh, from Venezuela as well. Uh, this is the third year we are offering the uh, podcasting for the ESL EFL classroom session. And we are really happy to participate uh, again in this EVO event. Okay, um, the idea of this session is basically to provide or help uh, EFL, ESL teachers to learn how to record and share a podcast. That's basically it. Now, how are they going to do that? Well, from week one to week five, they're going to be doing several activities that are going to help them do that. For example, uh, week one, they are going to get to know each other. Um, they are going to also answer a survey, talk about their expectations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But from week two to week four, they are going to become familiar with Audacity, for example, which is a software they can download for free to record. And they are going to learn how to share that audio file they are going to record using Audacity. They are also to become familiar with uh, web-based recorders like Podomatic or uh, Podbean, SoundCloud and they're going to learn how to share that thing. Now, the idea of the session is not only learning how to use these web tools to uh, record or share podcasts. It's also to learn or to have an idea on how to plan um, your, your classes around them, uh, the pedagogical application. And to do that, they are going to read about uh, some of the teacher's experiences. What about Alex here? here? Yeah, yeah just that's checking that's audio fantastic. there, see, seeing if you can hear me okay. Thumbs up. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. All good. Uh, thank you. I so happened to see Vance's invitation, which is um, uh, very welcoming and um, very keen to co-join initiatives, as always, with uh, the engineering, human and computing, wearable tech side of things as well. Um, I've dropped a few links in the chat which I hope can be published at some point across the webheads and the Evo crowd and as always with uh, the TALO initiative which is ostensibly an Asia Pacific conversation I'm very keen to uh, contribute in any way I can to Evo so I'll have to explore a little more with um, Vance in, in due time um, I'm under the pump and as you can see it's 2 a.m. for me. Uh, I just so happen to be awake and, and jumped in but I'm hoping to get an opportunity to uh, co-join this amazing uh, group of um, people and perhaps present something as to what I'm up to at the moment within my research and, uh, and teaching in, um, big data 
um, side of things as well. So thank you very much for the opportunity for joining. Hey, you, you've got an interesting conference coming up on valence. Is that what it is, or is it a POV thing, or, or both probably? No, it's it's both. If people were to go to valence.me, they'll understand that um, we're actually looking at where technologies are having a huge impact on people, particularly with the onset of technologies such as Google Glass, uh, Autographer, Mimito, and other uh, body-worn cameras, which are soon to be um, very widely distributed globally, which will have, we believe, a profound impact on humanity in general. So uh, if you were to go to valence.me and have a look, you'll uh, certainly, after reading through that environment, get to see who uh, key speakers are and what the conversations are about, and probably even a few familiar faces too, Vance. No doubt. Well, I've actually listened to your podcasts. Uh, the uh, which one is it? Uh, v uh, the one that you you podcast. Uh, what what is the podcast where you post all the the conference? Uh, you're going to be podcasting this one, I presume. Where, where will you post it? Well, look, this is what I've done. You'll notice the latest the latest the latest post I've just posted a moment ago on Valence Me. I'm trying to. Uh, as this uh, conference is about talking about transparency, I'm trying to open uh, this, what, what Webhead Stars and Evo and, and, and all of these environments is really open conversation in a global context and, and in a transdisciplinary and cross-domain, cross-sector way. I'm hoping that Valence.me will offer the same opportunity for people to join virtually and perhaps join some of the virtual sessions that are happening uh, at that um, in environment, so I'm sort of advocating for that to happen back into that um, uh, that that uh, program committee. So this is a, a this is a bit of a, a political um, initiative that I'm running right now uh, to open conversation up. Okay, I, I posted those links into Illuminate. Yep. I wanted to uh, let Miguel finish and also say hello to Sandra, who has joined us. Hello, Sandra. And back to you, Miguel. OK, so a reconnectivity issue or something like that. So I was talking about week two. Participants are going to learn how to uh, record and share their audio files, their podcasts using Audacity and web-based recorders. But also, they're going to learn a little bit on how they can use those podcasts in the language classroom by reading. Uh, and also, from the activities that we're going to plan for them, they are going to they can use them also to explore a little bit podcast uh, in the language platform. For our session, um, we are using uh, Yahoo as the main platform, but we have created three blogs: a session blog, an activity blog, and a reading blog. We are also going to be using WizIQ for our live sessions. And well, the idea is basically to sort of use a web two approach more than a web one approach for podcasts. And by this, I mean that we want participants to learn how to record and share and planning activities around those podcasts more than just uh, listening and planning activities from already made podcasts. So um, uh, I think that's basically it. I don't know if you have any questions before I have any other connectivity issue. Is there a mega link? That if we want to just subscribe to all the audio or check out the latest stuff, what's the best place? Uh, well, there's the Yahoo Groups. Uh, we are going to be uploading the recordings to the Yahoo Groups, but also from the blogs, from the activity blog, uh, the especially the session blog. In the session blog, we're going to be sharing all the blogs participants are going to create, um, which, by the way, they are going to showcase during week five uh, with their podcasts and also the projects that they are going to uh, be planning uh, throughout the session. And uh, might you be doing any live streaming? Yep. That's going to be every Saturday, uh, 11.30. Uh... Oh, I just want to say um, welcome to everybody to the 2013 Electronic Village Online. And I'm one of the coordinators in the, the team uh, headed by Carla Arena has uh, done a fabulous job and we have a whole team behind the coordination team of mentors that help us and uh, some of us are mentoring too I'm mentoring the the mentoring session for Evo you uh, you heard Tomas speak earlier so and um, 
it's a learning experience for everyone, including the coordinators. For example, I'm going to take the podcasting session again and becoming a webhead. So um, we're all participants here, and we're all volunteers from, um, well, many of us are part of the computer-assisted language learning se uh, interest section with TESOL. So this is an all-volunteer group, and uh, we love to give our time because we learn so much from it. So thanks, everybody. Do you have any advice out. or suggestions for first timers who might be feeling confused, overwhelmed, they can't keep up? What are some survival skills for EVO? <laughs> okay, well, one of the things for uh, that your the moderators will be very understanding if you're silent or if you're what we call a lurker. So if you're hanging back and not participating, and then all of a sudden they may invite you to a, a live session or send you an, a private email. So they're going to be trying to get you on board. And it's okay if you have tons of work, as all of us are, have our jobs, um, and then we're trying to volunteer for this. So we understand that you are involved as an educator. You don't have much time, but the little bit of time you have. So we have... we. For example, this session is recorded, and so you can view it at a later time. So very flexible scheduling for asynchronous and synchronous uh, activities. Thank you. Excellent words of wisdom. <laughs> right. I guess at some point I could talk about Multimook. Oh, yeah. We've got the Multimook. Yeah. What's yeah. that all? Multimook. Um, well... <clears throat> It's um, uh, well. Well, it, it was called multiliteracies for some time, and it's a course that's evolved over the years and develops a community. It's kind of a little bit different from some of the other EVO sessions. For example, the podcasting session was run really successfully by Evelyn and perhaps Miguel. I don't really remember, but uh, they've done it before. But I I don't know if they're keeping the same community. Uh, maybe I could ask that. Are are you uh, building time after time, like even becoming a webhead, for example, sort of takes a different group of people each time. Uh, although, of course, everybody sort of becomes a community with the webheads uh, umbrella group. Are there any other uh, uh, sessions that <clears throat> sort of try to become a community uh, year after year with the same Yahoo group, for example? I think that uh, multi, uh, the MOOC session, the multiliteracy session, is probably the only one I've, I've, you know, purposely tried to keep a lot of continuity there. For example, we have a tag for the EVO MLIT is um, for a tag for, you know, if you put that in, you, you, you'll get hits uh, from, you know, Flickr photos and things like that from way back, you know. So you, you, you tend to get, and, and we, 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 we keep the same Yahoo group, so we try to sort of perpetuate the sense of community. That's one one thing we try to do. And also, um, I, I like the one, one of the MOOCs that's running right now uh, says that it has a syllabus that participants are expected to break. And I think that's kind of the philosophy that the, you know, going from the MOOCs, the C MOOCs in particular, not the X MOOCs, which are, uh, have a syllabus that everyone is expected to follow and get a certificate at the end. But a C MOOC is where, uh, the participants uh, should be developing the syllabus from internal. You know, it, it goes on George Siemens's premises that uh, uh, everyone in his lectures is a different individual. He doesn't really know where they're coming from. So he talks in some of his. He's talking to uh, Howard Rheingold, for example. There's Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Uh, he's uh, Howard. He explained to Howard Rheingold that the idea is that the facilitator of a MOOC doesn't make a path for everyone to follow. The facilitator is trying to get everyone to create their own paths. So, and, and MOOCs don't have um, centers either. It's, uh, th that's a big question. And, and in a way, it kind of relates to what Sandra was just saying, you know, how do you cope with all this information overload? And that's, that's kind of what MOOCs are sort of designed to do, is to uh, try to get you comfortable with the information overload and learn that the, the networking is the most important part of it and to try to document what you're doing somewhere. So we sort of work on e-portfolios. This year I'm going to try to introduce badges. I'm going to try to f form a group of people in the multi-MOOC that will develop the badge aspect, for example, as, as their project for the 
uh, so the, at the end of the course we'll all have badges. But it's things like that. that, that uh, the, the course does have the syllabus. You can get to it by going to goodbyegutenberg.pbworks.com. But, um, and it has co-moderators. There's Anna Christina Pratas is uh, living in Alline near, uh, here in the UAE. She's agreed to join us and also Claire Braden Siskin, who a lot of us know from uh, TESOL. She's kind of in between jobs right now. She'll be going to Mozambique soon. Um, for the ELF program. And we also have Tony Gurr in Turkey. Uh, I'm not sure how assiduously he'll, he, he seems to be very busy writing books and things like that. But um, in any event, we, we have these people and, and I don't know if any of the moderators really, um, there has, there's, there's not a real, a lot of top-down organization in this kind of uh, course and what, what we're doing. So it, 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 you know, learning is messy. It's supposed to be. That's kind of we we emphasize that, and we we also uh, consider that learning is from a berry bush. We we put a berry bush out with tidbits of things that people can do. It's it's like fishing. When you go when you're hungry, you go down to the ocean. You throw in a line. You take out a fish, and then you're satisfied. You don't worry about all the fish that aren't there. So that's kind of what sipping from the fire hose is like. Uh, you. Um, you're just glad if you get a drink of water and forget about all the water that goes by. So uh, EVO is kind of like that too. You're going to get a lot of information. You could uh, get information overload, but the thing to focus on is what you um, what you're gaining from it. No, no. And where are your live oh, sessions, Susan? <laughs> well, our live, yeah, our live, our live hi, sessions are. Oh, hi, Susan. How are you? Good I'm fine, you. thank you. Can you hear me? We can hear everybody there. Oh, really? Hear televisions, <laughs> something. <laughs> it's Liverpool playing Manchester City. What do you uh, think? Don't, oh dear, Manchester kind of United. On, uh, oh, I'm in trouble now. Give him your headset. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I just want to say one more thing, and that is about the live sessions coming up, and especially, I don't know if you're aware, Jeff, but uh, Dave Cormier is joining us one week from today, and you might want to be involved in that. So we'll talk to you about that later. But uh, it's a pleasure to heck a couple of, Yeah, of course. <laughs> there you are. And a couple of, uh, Kurt Bonk is joining us. Um, so, and we have, you know, a lot of other people, that, and they're all listed at learningtogether.pbworks.com. And um, that's... I think I hope most of you know about learning together at pbworks.com. So anyway, well, thank you very much. Second, just to plug that before we get to Susan, because in case people aren't, it's you know EVO lasts five weeks, learning together lasts forever. Yes, that's right. Lifelong learning. Well, it's been going for three years now in that guise. Of course, it was it was Webheads before that. Uh, so that's been going for over ten years. <laughs> All well, right, let's hand it over to Susan to tell I'm us. I'm ready for the play by play. The play by play and uh, the drama. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try and tell my, my men friends here to not cheer too much if Liverpool scores, okay? <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Oh, am I getting a lot of feedback? We hear you fine. If you ah. were listening before and you did not mute or pause the Ustream, I'm sorry, the YouTube, then you're getting double audio. Ah. So on that where you were text chatting, you want to stop the video. Ah, how do I do that? <laughs> no, stop the audio. Go to that, page oh, or oh. Go to that page and click on the pause button in the video window. In the video window. Mm. Or just close okay. that. Okay. Close that page. Yeah. Okay. Am I still here? You are still here. You're still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always terrified of closing pages. <laughs> I lose things very often. Okay. Evo Drama. Um, I've been moderating on Evo Drama for six years now. We normally have about 300 members. And this year, up to now, we've got 147 signed in. And we're expecting the, the rest of the group to sign in. We as drama people are not very techy, as 
most oh, bless you, Vance. <laughs> As I'm most mute. of you know, um, so uh, we try not to do too much techie stuff. We are trying to include <laughs> um, voice uh, mail view and Voxer Pop and Animoto and Storybird and things like that but we don't have very great expectations because we find that the drama types although they love doing voice and body movement and role play and improvisation in reality they seem to shy away from it in the virtual world and if anybody can give us any help on that we would really appreciate it but we have a lovely syllabus lined up for this year and we're getting people returning um, from many years in the group. So it's great. We're getting lots of new people from China too. So I think Regarding it's going to be great. Question: Don't you think this kind of Google Plus Hangout would lend itself to certain drama activities? Absolutely. But you would have to teach me how to do it first. <laughs> You've done it. <laughs> You're teaching yourself right now. <laughs> I tried to do it actually. I, I found out about it and I tried to do it. I thought it would be a great way of, of inserting some drama into Evo drama. But I couldn't work it out. I couldn't work out how to include people. Well, I'd be glad to, to lend a hand if there is interest. We geeks like to hang out with you artists, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that would be great. Thank you. Um, let's do that. Um, we're going to be using WizIQ, and I'm actually reasonably proficient on WizIQ, can you believe it? Um, because I do it with my team of teachers once a month, and uh, we have discussion groups, and I, I teach as well. Oh, Sandra! <laughs> Don't frighten me like that. I'm easily frightened, you know. <laughs> She's the timekeeper. <laughs> okay. Am I done? No, we're just teasing you. Any questions? <laughs> Stop it, Sandra. <laughs> Any questions? Oh. Well, I was I, just I, adding I... some drama. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, when are your live it's sessions? Very sorry? When are your live sessions? Um, we haven't actually sorted that out yet. <laughs> <laughs> you, you drama folks are very spontaneous. We, we're, <laughs> we're, we're very um, new at technology, I'm afraid, and we're not very organized. And we have so many people as well. That's the problem. You know, from so many different time zones, it's very hard to find a good time for everybody. Which is sort of a general note. I mean, lives or synchronous events don't always have to be everybody, you know? Exactly. No. I mean, I so said that to the group. This that, time zone team and that time zone team. Yeah. I said that to the group that, you know, we should do lots of with IQs. And if people can't join, they can't join. But maybe we can cater for small groups of people if we do lots of them. I've also got Patrice Baldwin, who's the president of National Drama, to do uh, with IQ for us as well. So that's exciting. She did a podcast for us last year and she's doing a with IQ for us this year. So we are moving forward slowly, slowly. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I might add that Susan did a really inspiring session with uh, for us on learning together. And if you, yeah, you can go and search for it there and uh, there's an index and if you just search for Susan Hilliard you'll find it. It's, it's a really amazing video of some of the work she's been doing with children in Argentina. Thank you. I'm, I'm actually going to Ayatefel in April. I've been invited to speak <laughs> about it so maybe see you there in Liverpool. Okay, thanks Who Sandra. Knows? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Great talking to you. Oh, I wanted to have a quick say about TESOL. Please. Those of you who are involved with... Oh, no, I hear an echo. <laughs> Hang on one second. 
I'm going to exit. I forgot to follow your advice and exit Illuminate. Okay, I was going to say, if you're volunteering for Evo, there's a, a high chance that you could earn a scholarship with TESOL, with professional development, for those of us. For example, uh, when I, the reason I, I've met Susan Hilliard, we met in TESOL in New Orleans, uh, and we happened to be, just by circumstance, we were both receiving awards for scholarships, so she's done a lot of work. Uh, I'm just kind of a newbie and started in 2009 with Evo, but those of you who are interested in in traveling to TESOL, they do provide those scholarships, and they like to hear when you you know when you write your um, grant application that you have been involved with Evo. So uh, there was a lot of other Evo folks that I had never you know met before, and there we were all standing waiting to get our awards, and and I was like, oh, Susan <laughs> from Drama, so that was cool. So a little plug for TESOL scholarships. Can you provide some details? What what uh, what kind of scholarship are we talking about? Okay, well, uh, for example, the professional development grant, uh, and these are if you when if you're on the TESOL, um, the full website for TESOL International Association, uh, you look up the scholarship link, and you can the professional development grant allows you to attend TESOL for free. So they'll pay for your the conference fees, and also I got the professional development grant. So the travel one pays for your if you're abroad, it will pay for your airfare to come. And of course you have to do you know provide all kinds of you know documentation that you're an ESL teacher and you're a member of um, you have to you do have to be a member of TESOL. And then um, the professional development grant lets you you know those pre-conference institutes. Well, I got to attend one. I usually can't afford them because because they're $150, $250. So I got to attend one of my choice uh, with that grant. Wonderful. Well, um, this is Evelyn Izquierdo speaking from Caracas, Venezuela. I'm so glad to be here again, uh, participating in this um, kickoff. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Jeff, Vance, and all the EVO. Um, coordinators, mentors, and participants. This is great. This is the this is a, a, a unique opportunity we have to get together and do excellent things. Uh, it's right at the beginning of the year, so happy new year to you. Uh, I guess we are full of energy to start working and sharing learning with our colleagues from all over the world. So thank you very much for this opportunity again. Um, I want to thank Nina Liakos. Uh, she is our mentor in the podcast for the ESL and ESL classroom session. Um, and also all those who have been a part of our team before, like Jose Rodriguez, who's uh, working in, in the other uh, platform. Um, um, but, um, Cadira Perez was also with us last year, and this year we have two new co-moderators, Miguel Perez and Julia Asensión. Uh, we're really glad to be a 100% Venezuelan team, so we're very proud to be uh, participating this year again. Uh, with our session. Uh, you are all invited to join us uh, and share with us. Um, we are so honored when someone from uh, Bo or any other session, the previous sessions, uh, join us too because um, this is a team of wonderful uh, moderators. Uh, this is A plus and uh, we are really proud to be part of this team. So uh, you are uh, invited to join us if you can because they're excellent uh, sessions this year again. Uh, and if you want to say hello, stop by there and just say hello and participate with us or join us on uh, Saturday mornings at 16 GMT. Well, you are all invited. Okay, well, it's all for today. Um, my best wishes to all of you. Okay? Bye bye. 
uh, and say hello to Nina. Hello, Nina. Hi there. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. And okay. Before we get to you, Nina, there's a question for Vance, an excellent question. Right, the, about, about the is, hashtag. About the hashtag. What is the hashtag for EVO? But hashtag the, yeah, for was, EVO. Yeah. It's uh, 2013 yeah. EVO, not the yeah, other yeah. way around, because it's used, EVO is, means many other things. So they have the 2013 EVO. So I shared that in the Illuminate. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. okay. I don't have too much to say. I'm I'm speaking from Gaithersburg, Maryland, which is about 20 miles from Washington, D.C. And I I'm not very good at math, but I've been involved with EVO since 2006 when I took becoming a webhead. I didn't know what a webhead was, and uh, basically and now you email. are one. Yeah, well, sort of. <laughs> Um, and I've participated in becoming a webhead two or three times in uh, multi literacies, which is now multi MOOC, in uh, podcasting in uh, 2011. Uh, last year I was in class digit tools, which is not being done again. And uh, at some point there I was co moderating another session. I can't even remember the name of it, but it's been a wild ride. And this is my first year on the coordinating team, which is again a learning curve for me. And I'm um, mentoring the podcasting session, which is great because as I said, I, I was a participant in 2011. It was a, a wonderful session and I'm so glad to be able to do it again and confident that actually Miguel and Evelyn and their colleagues are probably going to be mentoring me more than I'm mentoring them. Uh, so it's exciting. I'm looking forward to uh, EVO as always. I also plan to lurk in neuroscience because I'm really interested in the brain and I don't know how I will have time to do all that and actually have my job and, and sleep. And But, you know, I'll do the best that I can. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk here. Good luck to everybody. And Nina, I would like to ask you the same question I asked Sandra, because I recall 2006 when you were entering this world, and it was not the smoothest of uh, first few steps, as I recall. Do you have any words of wisdom for people who might be feeling a little overwhelmed or frustrated with all these new tools and chaos? Well, I guess one tip I would say is really I think if people are working at the same time that it's insane to try to do more than one session. I know that some people uh, are able to do that. I have really never been able to do that and I don't know that I'll be able to do it this time, although I'm, since I've already done one, um, I'm hoping to be able to kind of keep up in the other, but already uh, in the session that I'm lurking in, the neuroscience, I, I've basically checked out of the interactive part of it. You know, when I see posts from participants, I just, I just zap them right out of my email without even looking at them because, you know, they're coming in like 20, 30, 40 a day and I can't, I just can't do it. So my tip would be to start, start kind of small, not try to do too much. Um, I know that some people do sign up for more than one session because they plan to come back and uh, go over the materials when when it's over. Uh, my experience has been that I don't actually do that. I think that I'm going to do that and I tell myself that I'm going to do that, but I don't do that. Um, so my advice would be to sign up for one session and give it all you got. And I would just add to that, don't feel like you have to understand everything and read everything. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it, you, and also for the, the Yahoo group emails, I do daily digest. If, if I just get this constant flood into my inbox, I just, it turns me off. Right. So well, I, that, that's I what happens digest. with Edmodo. There's no way to get a daily digest, and that's why I zap them right out of my email because neuroscience you uses go, Edmodo. You can always just go to that site. And go right. to Edmodo and see what's new. Right. Yeah, I've been saying, telling myself I should go to Edmodo and turn them off. Hi, kitty. 
I I like I I don't like the digests. I have to have the mails one by one because if I actually want to reply to one, I you you've got to tease it out of the digest. Whereas you know they're easy to zap if you don't need them, uh, and you don't if you know you don't need it. It's it's recorded. It's all in the it's all on the on the cloud. But to get uh, I like to get the mails one by one so that and and there and I put a filter on all of them in Gmail so that I can see. If you know what I've got a lot of them, I can just identify those and then archive them. So, right, that works pretty well. Yeah, because one of the problems is that when there are too many individual emails, they may um, crowd the emails that I need to see from my job out of the inbox. Yeah, when I've when I've got a lot of emails, and if you set up filters for them, then uh, they're identified and. If you've got a bunch of them, just click there, and you can always go back. I never do that, but you know, theoretically, you could always go back and find those emails, and then keep your your inbox free for the job stuff. I, I, I use also, separate emails. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I don't use my primary email for for Yahoo groups or whatever notifications because it's just even if you create a filter, I just when I'm ready to look, I'll go to that email and mm -hmm. you know. I'm afraid I, I would never be ready to look. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I, a good I like idea. Them all coming in through Gmail because you can set up those filters and then you can separate them out really quickly. Yeah, that's I should what I like. That. To do. Everything comes in one place. You see everything, you know. Yeah, I have mine set up as a priority inbox and all the Edmodo stuff comes in, you know, as non-priority but then if other stuff comes in as non-priority, I haven't figured out how to see more. There used to be a way, you know, click on see more, but now there doesn't seem to be a way to do that since Google rearranged Gmail. I guess my final word would be to keep learning but have fun while doing, and the interaction is the one thing that you can't do later. So. If you have a choice between doing homework and interacting, you might almost want to interact. You can do the homework later. Um, it's obviously ideal to do all of it. Uh, I think one of the there was a really interesting experience we had with Carla's session, the neuroscience one, because it's on a topic that they don't really know a lot about, and they became anxious at one point that their expert wasn't going to participate fully, and. Uh, so Carla turned to the coordinators for advice and asked what uh, what did we think she should do and we we all kind of thought well this is a great you know you do, these sessions don't necessarily have an expert because uh, you know if you want to find out about neurosciences and you, you start a, a session about it then you can crowdsource that information it's kind of the MOOC philosophy in a way um, you you just pull from the participants, and the participants can teach themselves. And the whole idea is that you don't really need a teacher. There, in fact, I've, I, I said in a plenary one time that there's no such. I didn't think there was any such thing as a language teacher. I don't think you can teach a language. The language has to be learned. So maybe you could actually teach someone about neurosciences and mathematical concepts and things like that. But basically, people really uh, have to learn uh, these things. To, you know, if they're going to get into the higher Bloom's taxonomy, uh, you know, up to the top of that pyramid. So that's kind of the attitude, I think, for uh, the sessions is we, we're not really experts uh, in the things that we teach necessarily, but we're just interested in them and passionate about them. And as uh, Sandra said, uh, the we, we do it because we want to learn, you know, and uh, Stephen Downs said that at, at the first MOOC in 2008, someone asked him why did he... Uh, go to the trouble of putting on a course for thousands of people with all the nightmare management things they were getting into. They didn't know what they were getting into. He said, well, because I'll learn from it. You know, and that's that's just uh, what we're doing. We're, we're learning, and uh, that's what we really like to do. And so we all like to learn together, and um, that's, you know, what the sessions are all about. So you don't really, and, you don't, and if you're not, you know, you learn what you can. So that's another thing I would say is that don't be, uh, concerned about what you're not learning. Uh, just take what you can, learn what you can, and uh, be happy with that. All I'd like free. to jump in, and th that's all very, very true. Uh, when you're learning about something like neuroscience, 
uh, when you're learning about something like podcasting and using different tools, I think that is something that can be taught. And I want to just uh, shout out to Evelyn and Miguel, uh, who were the, the moderators with Jose Rodriguez the year that I took uh, podcasting first for an absolutely stellar lineup of tutorials on how to use Audacity, uh, Podbean, and the other tools that they were teaching. Um, th that was absolutely great and it was really a highlight of the session because when you got stuck you could go back to those video tutorials that they had made and review what you needed to do. It was really, really helpful. Yeah, but they're not teaching you at that time. You're learning. You know, when the learner is ready, the teacher appears. And, you know, at, well, at Russell Standard. Well, yes, but they made the tutorials. And when they yeah. made them, they were teaching. <laughs> and yes. when I watched them, I was learning. Mm -hmm. If they hadn't made the tutorials, I, I would probably still be. You know. mm -hmm. that, that's kind of the flipped <laughs> classroom uh, concept. You know, mm -hmm. you're supposed to make teaching materials that students can then use in their own time. And um, but if, if they hadn't made the tutorials and you really wanted to learn it, you probably would have found a way. And especially if you have a network, so mm -hmm. you would have yeah. got you would have got it somehow. But sh certainly those things facilitated, and that's what teachers do: is we try to make things easier for you. Know, we try to facilitate. We're, we're master right. learners. Mm -hmm. is, right. For me, like you were saying, Nina, this, the social part is, is a huge fun part. And for me, kind of just lurking, seeing what's going on in all the different sessions. And Do you lurk in all the sessions, Jeff? I do my best, but it's not that really? easy. Really? No. Aren't, <laughs> I mean, I, like to, I want a page of like, what is this session talking about this week? And what are the live events this week? And there's still no... Combined calendar. Oh, how I would love a combined EVO calendar. Some of the Yahoo groups are open, so I can aggregate the RSS feeds, uh, the Edmodos, and uh, other places. Not so, the Moodles, not so much. Um, but I will be doing my best at webheadsinaction.org to create some kind of interface where people can kind of tune into what's going on in in the different sessions and what's being published out there. Yeah, it, it, you, it, your cool casts are really sort of. I can't. Was that was was that with the edgy mook? Uh, one of those mooks. Edgy mook and whatever the mook was after that, I kind of did. It yeah, too. you sort of carved out a part of it, you know, uh, and and set up these cool casts, which became a um, uh, kind of a, a, another center, and it it developed a little coterie of people who were, uh, you know, who, who followed along and and made that. Actually, for me, that was my MOOC experience. Uh, uh, you know, I, I sort of do the same thing. I, I lurk in other parts of it, but then, and I was engaged in that particular part of it because the timing happened to be right. So, um, you know. And I'd love to hang out, and I'd be very uh, interested in. You know, last year I did a couple of open hangouts for EVO. Um, I'd be willing to do that again if people are are interested. There wasn't huge interest last year. Uh, I'd be glad to kind of work with individual sessions if, if they're interested. And I mean the thing is about hanging out, it's so easy. And, and you know it doesn't have to be the whole session. If a group of people within a session want to talk about a particular topic, let's hang out. And it, for me, I find these hangouts so much more conversational than an Illuminate uh, or those kinds of things. Here I feel like we're all looking at each other, and we're the the audio and the video is really good, um, but I'm biased, I guess. I, I remember when you guys were first doing your webcasting. You know, you when you started World Bridges, or, and when we discovered each other, that was we were one of you. You had the one is the loneliest number of moments, but then uh, you know it, you you went around to uh, uh, conferences and you carried a webcam with you and you. You talk to people, and they say, "What are you doing? You're, you know, why, why are you doing this live? Why don't you just record it and play it later?" And you know, you had the secret. This, this is what you need to do. You need to actually make a conversation out of it and bring it to the real. You know, uh, I'm sure you can go back and listen to the recording later, or other people can. But you know, to actually be here, engaged in this. This converse, uh, a really uh, an element of, of that learning experience that a lot of people miss, but you you got your finger on it. 
Yep. And I'll just mention, Jeff. as my project for 2013, I mean, what I really want to get going is this kind of thing for language learning. You know, right now, if language learners want to go somewhere and have that kind of social interaction with other learners or with educators, there's a few places, but there's no, there, nothing's really gained that much traction for the live interaction component. Uh, so I'm going to be fiddling with EnglishBridges.net and seeing what uh, what I can get going there. That's cool, yeah. Jeff. You fill yeah. you fill bridges for a while, Graham Stanley. I did. And I just the name never worked, and I I EnglishBridges.net opened up, so I'm going to go with English Bridges. Why not? Cool. So any <laughs> last words? Ah, oh, beautiful smells coming from the kitchen back here behind me. Like Is anybody energy. still of us in Illuminate? Can you see the, the chat box? I closed it out. Yes. I can't. Okay. Evelyn is there. Any questions? Uh, Lane is there. Lane is there still? Lane, you never did join us in the Hangout? Or I wonder if she's actually there or away from keyboard maybe? Awk. Well... Uh, I have to ask. say, I think this might be the smoothest launch webcast ever. Just add yes. a few more venues and it would be yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to think, dream up some new ones for next time. Oh, you, we didn't really discuss the end of, uh, on the 17th, there should be an end of uh, EVO session. We haven't really talked about that. but anyway, If this is a that. kickoff, would that be a kick-on? <laughs> You know, I was thinking about the term kickoff, and I feel like that's a little bit North American centric. I yeah. Mean, kickoff is sort of like an American football term, isn't it? Yes, it is. How about launch? I'm thinking that's probably launch or takeoff and landing. You can always say opening ceremony, closing ceremony. That's so yeah. formal, though. Yeah. You could call it a oh. scrum. A what? A scrum? <laughs> a scrum, yeah. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's when all with when all the rugby players pile up on top of one another and <laughs> Well that's kind of what happened. <laughs> yeah. All right. Lane, Lane says she forgot oh. how to join the hangout. I think if you give her the link one more time, she will come and join us. Okay. Let's see what we can find here. Oh I kept getting the wrong link. <laughs> I was saying another great way is find Jeff LeBeau and then join him if he's already in your circles. You'll see the live event going on right now. That's a shortcut. We have it here somewhere. Here it is. I, I just tossed it in the chat uh, where she is, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, and illuminate. Ah, in English football, no. they also no, kick no, no, off. No. Football, Bob, you mean soccer, right? Okay. Well, if it, if it works for soccer, then. Cause that's and Peggy soccer. says she doesn't think of it as American, particularly. Okay, I'm pasting the... I found the... the Hangout link, and I'm putting it in uh, Illuminate. Uh, go ahead and invite her specifically. So you guys can see the PowerPoint. Just wanted to add it to this so people can go through it later. But can you? Can everybody see it right now? I can't see oh. it, but I don't know where should I be looking. I just have two oh, okay. <laughs> open. I need Probably you have to launch have it. Haven't shared your, uh, it. Uh, yeah. I launched it, but let's see. Hmm. Because we should see it instead of your avatar, instead of your webcam. It should, it should become what we see. I so see we... slide share, Jeff. What's lower third? Lower third is a little banner you can put on the bottom of your... Um, you can write your name or you can write a little tagline and uh, oh. that appears but none of us have it because it's not working right now we all try okay. to get it in the, when it, it says you have to install a toolkit or something like that ah. Lane, congratulations you made it in 
Hey, Lane. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? This has been so con Well, I I haven't done this in so long, I forgot how to do it. Oh, well, you no, you figured it out. Well done. Yeah. Okay. You're on, Lane. Hi, Lane. Okay. How are Hi. you? Uh, okay. Lane, I'm wondering so, if you're still getting audio from what you were watching. If you were yeah, watching... Yeah, I just closed everything. Excellent. I closed everything now, I think. And I muted <laughs> Illuminate. Yeah, I, I've been trying to follow two visuals and two chats and, and, every, and getting all... Cons <laughs> I get it. So that speak to, it speaks to what you were talking about, but... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lane, your audio Something's is audio. wonky, and it I sounds she, like it's a bandwidth connection. She, she uh, sounds like a guitar. Wah, wah. Uh, <laughs> what I would uh, suggest, or maybe she's an alien. That could ah. be. We, we, broke up. We, we lost your last few sentences, Lane. Do you want to try again? Okay. Um, how is this now? Is this better? I, I, I'm using That's wireless. Good. That's I, good, yeah. But, uh, okay, I just wanted to say I concur with what everyone said. You have to manage your time in EVO. And what I suggest is if you try to do too much, like I did this morning, it takes you two hours before you can actually participate because you're spending so much time figuring out who's where and and what to look at and what to listen to. So um, every year, I mean, it'll be back again next year. So my suggestion is each year pick what what interests you that year. Who do you want to work with? What do you want to learn? How do you want to participate? And kind of narrow it enough so that you can you can have a thread that you follow throughout the 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 five five weeks now uh, I think and um, and just decide that that's that's your goal for the, for this particular time and I know for me every year um, it's different I just joined the um, Vansis group because oh, cool. um, my un university is talking a lot about the impact of um, MOOCs or MOOCs uh, on on traditional higher education and I, I need to get up to speed because they put me on the task force for online learning this year so uh, that's my PD for this year and then I'm mentoring um, the Moodle for teachers I'm a big fan of Moodle uh, and um, and of Nelly and I did try to participate earlier but I was a little confused I was in Illuminate and then I was watching Google and then she went into WYSIQ and I got or we we's IQ and I, I just didn't manage at all but um, but I've been doing this for years and if I'm confused can imagine um, what it's like for new people so I, I really have have to say for anyone who's listening to the recording or is here today right now um, if you're new be patient with yourself I mean we'll all be patient with you but be patient with yourself uh, anything that's new just like your your students if you're an English language teacher you know that patience and support uh, go together so uh, you have to also as I said be 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 good to yourself and just manage your time and pick something that you can learn that's okay? great advice okay thank you glad I finally got Thanks. here I've been <laughs> here since nine o'clock but <laughs> oh. I mean, Oh, my time, I mean. So, you know, I've been here since 14 uh, GMT. <clears throat> and Elizabeth Hepson Smith has just turned up in Illuminate and said, Wherever Sorry, here is. Late. Now, how do I go uh, away? <laughs> well, you can stay where you are. Okay. Um, Elizabeth Hepson Smith has just appeared in Illuminate, oh, and I good. suppose she can hear us. And she says, Hi, all. Sorry to be so late. Big night last night. Ooh. And and something. And I have to scroll on ahead to download and install stuff. Yes, she can hear us. Oh, so we gotta stop talking about her. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I, <laughs> shall we shall we, here and shall we finish off and illuminate? Uh, okay. Uh, That's the one place where I'm work. not. Let me switch this again. Oh, I just want to say one more thing, really quick. Can I? 
Hello? Yes. Sure. Am I Go still ahead. here? Mm -hmm. I, I got a yep. wonderful Christmas present. I just want to share this with all of you because you're, you know, techie types. My son gave me wireless headphones. Wireless awesome. Headphone. So what I was doing this morning, because I wasn't talking until just now, all morning I've had on this wireless one walking around my kitchen, oh, making cool. my coffee, doing whatever I want, and you connect mm. it. You, 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 this is the chart, the dock. And you uh -huh. can connect it to your television set or to your computer or to whatever you want, and it oh, charges. Nice. And you can, and it's also good because I have a hearing problem, and that's another story. But, but um, it, it doesn't have a mic. But if you're just listening, you can walk around, do whatever you want. Yeah. And then when it, when I used my regular headset now because I'm talking, but I just thought I'd uh, share that for mm -hmm. people who want to work, walk around, and listen. Okay. <laughs> well, that's cool. awesome. But that's it does awesome. take up. Uh, a USB port on your computer? No, no, it doesn't. It's um, well, you can get a hub. I it, no, it's not not a USB. It you just it's wireless. Plug oh, but, it into the, the um and the wall. I see that huh? Lisa had the same question that I did. What? I'm sorry. No USB. About, no. Okay. You're talking about this. This is um the dock yeah. is plugged into the wall, but. But that's just to charge it. So it just and, connects. And it's co it's wirelessly. also it's connect. No, I, it here is the. This goes into the. How am I going to show this? This this just goes in instead of what I have now. I have the re the regular headset <laughs> speaker connection. To, this one is the speaker connection. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. put this in to your speaker connection. Mm. Just like a headset. Well. You plug it in, but then it's wireless. Okay. Good. That's it. That's a lovely yeah. toy. All right, Illuminate. We're going to head your way and give you the uh, last word here. Uh, Illuminate, you are on. Elizabeth, but she can't hear us. Maybe I can talk to her. Let's see if I can get my well, Illuminate going. Yes, is talking to you, Elizabeth, even though you can't hear him. Uh, but if you would like to speak, please grab the microphone. Jeff is in all places at once. Okay, I can talk, I can talk in, in Illuminate. Illuminate. It's finally came. It's Elizabeth, finally we're so glad to see we're you. We're so glad to see you. And, um, and um, we're waiting. We're, we're going to have you take us out of here. So you get the last word. Okay, well, just, okay, well, just say hi to us. Say hi to us. And goodbye. And goodbye. <laughs> Jeff is going to bed, and I'm going to dinner. Uh, we're really glad, we're to really glad to see you. Anybody, uh, anybody able to hear me here? I uh, see it looks like it's working. Okay, yes. <laughs> the Hangout stream from Earth <laughs> says yes. Uh, I just wanted to welcome everybody, and uh, I'm so happy to be able to be part of the send off and. Uh, I hope you guys all have fun. I think Lane's advice to choose one of the many sessions and try to really focus closely on that because the time just goes so fast. Um, so that's about all the words of advice I have, and I think everybody ought to get either their day started or back to bed, depending on their time zone. Uh, good to talk to you. That time is goes some fast. excellent advice, Elizabeth. Uh, I'm going to take you up on that. Uh, Vance, did you want to? Yeah, I was going to say time goes fast unless you're a moderator. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem to go quickly. <laughs> All right, well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Vance and Nina and everyone who participated and everyone who tuned in and everyone who's going to enjoy their EVO experience. Uh, this recording will be up sometime within the next 24 hours uh, at webheadsinaction.org and sort of venue no doubt. Have a wonderful EVO. We'll be hanging out, tuning in, and uh, learning together. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you Bye, for everybody. maintaining webheadsinaction.org for us and uh, giving us a place to base all this really interesting stuff that we're all doing, and you in particular. Thank you very much. Really my pleasure. Good night. Good night. Good and good morning. Sweet night dreams. Night. Bon appétit à moi. Bon appétit. Mm -hmm.